Chapter 5 of Romans, beginning in verse 1. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans 5, verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, which means that when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, God is no longer angry at you for all of the sins that you have committed against him. Jesus Christ reconciles you, a hell-bound sinner, to Almighty God the moment that you receive him as Lord and Savior. All is well between you and God thanks to Jesus. He holds nothing against you at all. Verse 2, Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. We are saved by Christ and we are given access to God through Jesus Christ. We are given access access to to God's grace, which provides salvation and fellowship with our Creator. Jesus is why God hears your prayers. If Christ had not died on the cross and paid for your sins, and if you had not received him as Lord and Savior, God would not hear your prayers because the Bible says that your sins have separated you from God. Three. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who was given to us. For you as a Christian, suffering is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. It is a means to a greater good. God uses suffering to chip away at sin and make us more holy. Six, for when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus didn't die for us because we could repay him. Jesus had nothing to gain from dying for us. His death was totally unselfish and entirely for our benefit. God the Son was perfectly content with God the Father and the Holy Spirit. He didn't need to have sinners reconciled to him in order to make his life better. You know, I heard a I suppose you would call her a pop theologian, say, oh, God, he was so lonely, and he needed someone to love, and that's why Jesus died on the cross cross to pay for our sins, because he needed us so badly. That is just such sentimental rot. Nothing could be further from the truth. God is completely and totally content with himself and in himself because he is absolutely perfect. His death on the cross was for our benefit and in the process of doing it for his glory. Seven. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. Now, there may be a kind soul out there somewhere who in a moment of unselfishness would die for a good person. Certainly there are occasional heroes on the battlefield who take a bullet for their fellow soldiers. And any parent worth the title would die to protect their child. So, you know, we understand that. But notice what 7 and 8 say together here. For scarcely for a righteous man 
will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus didn't die for us because we were a bunch of, of, of wonderful people, you know, that he just couldn't resist. He didn't die for us because we were of such great worth. He didn't die for us because he found us irresistible. He died for us because it is God's nature to love the unlovable with a sacrificial love. Six through nine. For when we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Jesus died to save us in spite of and because of our unworthiness. Jesus also forgives us. I'm talking about Christians. He forgives us sinning Christians after we confess, once again, in spite of our own unworthiness. So don't let feelings of being unworthy stop you from asking for forgiveness. God specializes in being good to the unworthy. In fact, the only people he's good to are the unworthy because you know, it's the only kind of people there are in the world. 10. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Jesus died for us when we were God's enemies. He died for us so that we would become his children so that we could become his children because he couldn't even do it. There was no chance without the death of Christ. So again, Jesus died for us when we were God's enemies. He died for us so that we could become God's children. And since he was willing to do that for his enemies, he certainly will forgive his children when they confess their sins. Eleven, And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. It feels good to know that you're right with God. And it will feel even better when you're on your deathbed, believe me, because at that point, nothing else is going to matter. Are you right with God or aren't you? So you nothing else matters at that point. 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. When Adam sinned, sin came into the entire human race. Meaning this. Sin came into all people who would ever live through Adam. Sin entered and spread separation from God along with spiritual and physical death to everyone. 13. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. People committed sin from the time of Adam until 2,000 plus years later when Moses was born. But during that time, God did not judge the people guilty and worthy of death because of their sin. You know why? He didn't judge them guilty and he didn't judge them worthy of death because he had not yet given his laws which tell us what he wants to do and what he doesn't want us to do. We saw this last time. Transgression is a breaking of a law. And there were no laws to transgress. We still sinned. We still did bad things, but they were not transgressions. Now, look at 13 and 14 together. For until the law, sin was in the world, 
but sin is not imputed when there is no law. That's what I'm talking about. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned, according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. When people died from Adam until Moses, it was not because of their own sin. They had no law from God, so God did not consider them worthy of death for the wrong that they did. People died because they inherited the sin that Adam committed, which had been a direct disobedience to a command of God. Adam transgressed because he had a law. We had no law, but we still died. Why? Because Adam's sin was transmitted down to the entire human race. Verse 15, but the free gift is not like the offense, for if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. One man, Adam, brought death to many by his sin. One man, Jesus, brought forgiveness to many through God's mercy. The obedience of Christ and a sacrificial death on the cross reverses the death sentence which comes to man through Adam. The obedience of Jesus and his death gives eternal life to all who will receive him as Lord and Savior. There's the big switch. There's the big reversal right there. 16. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned, for the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation, but the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. So, Adam's one sin brought death to many. Jesus takes away all of man's sins and brings life to many. Jesus undid the bad that Adam did. So when a person repents and receives Christ as Lord and Savior, Jesus removes the sin of Adam and also all their own personal sins. 17. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. God's mercy and grace are more powerful than all sins. Adam's and ours put together. That's why when one receives Christ as Lord and as Savior, the grace of God completely removes the guilt and the stain of their sins. 18. Therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation. Even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Adam's sin brought guilt and punishment to everyone. Our Lord's death on the cross takes away all guilt and removes all punishment from those who receive him. Jesus did all that needs to be done to make guilty sinners innocent before God. 19. For as, one, as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Adam caused many to be made sinners when he disobeyed God. Jesus caused many to be made righteous when he obeyed God. 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. What does that mean? It means that God gave the commandment to show us just how sinful we all are so that we all stand before him guilty and we know that we are. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. No matter how many sins we commit, God's grace can take care of them. 
If your sins are measured on judgment day and found to weigh 1,000 pounds, then God will give you 1,001 pounds of mercy so that your sins will not be an issue. Jesus has more mercy for you than you have sin. Jesus has more forgiveness than you have failures. 21. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The sin of Adam brings eternal hell. The righteous life of the Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrificial death brings eternal life to all who will follow him and look to him for mercy.